The most common and essential way of playing Magic the Gathering is to just crack open packs with your friends and assemble decks with the cards in your collection. So naturally, we went all out. En gao, où ça y est? Ah, si. Allons-y. I go first. I will keep. Lost Caverns of Ixalan is such a cool set. And when I was going through it, I noticed a lot of things have to do with the graveyard. So I saw Abuelo's Awakening. And I thought, what's the biggest artifact we can get from our graveyard and put into play? And I found threefold Thunderhall. Which, if you just play four, you get a four, four flying that makes four gnomes and then attacks and makes even more gnomes. If you play even more, you make it even bigger, and there's so many other cool graveyard synergies to play with the Selesnya deck. Especially with the fact that a lot of your key creatures explore. So with things like Cenote Scout, you can just play a beater that puts creatures into your graveyard that you can then bring back with your reanimate package. It's such a synergistic deck, I can't wait to see how it plays out. See. Ah, buenos dias, amigos. Today, we're playing my favorite type, dinosaurs. And it's good because it's strong and fast. Kyle won't even know what hit him. The reason why this one in particular is so good, we have a one mana land of elf for dinosaurs, basically a dinosaur elf, but also we have a two mana ramp growth and a two mana mana elf. So that means so much ramp to cast into the big, medium and big drops. And then once we have so many dinosaurs, we cap it all off with the new Galta or Gisha or Palani's Hatcher, which gives all my dinosaurs haste and makes even more dinosaurs. I don't think Kyle has any chance. Is there Spain in Ixalan? Sure. But they're all vampires. Are you a vampire? No, I'm a conquistador. In Ixalan, the conquistadors are also vampires. See? <laughs> I'll play forest. <laughs> I haven't known that. That means I'm immortal. Wait until I deal you 20 damage. Oh. I'll pass to you. Well, it's apparently very easy to kill vampires. <laughs> I'll play a cavern of souls. Ooh. I found it in my treasure chest. You found a cavern in your treasure chest? It's a very big treasure chest. I will name human because uh, I wanted to name Dinosaur, but we need to cast my humans because I will cast an Ixalan Law Keeper. So Cavern of Souls now makes mana for humans and the Ixalan Law Keeper makes mana for dinosaurs. I will draw. I'll play Forest mm -hmm. and I will keep what I'm playing a mystery longer. So apparently you're not into the creature business. I'm Selesnya Control. This is so good. Okay, I will play a mountain and then I will cast one of my big friends, Pugnacious Hammerskull. Gesundheit. <laughs> it's a three mana six six. Oh wow! Yes, welcome oh. to Ixalan. There's a bit more text. Whenever it attacks, if I don't control another dinosaur, it gets a stun counter. So if I have another dinosaur, it's basically a three mana six six. That's really good. I am gonna have to ask it to get lost. I'm gonna cast Get Lost. It's uh, instant, destroy target creature, enchantment, or planeswalker. Its controller creates two map tokens. It's not a shopping mall, I can't just get lost <laughs> in the jungle. We get a new type of token that we haven't seen yet. You get two maps. Go ahead. I will untap. I will be very good at drawing cards. Oh, darn it. It's okay. I will play planes. And I will Jade Light Spelunker for three. Basically a Jade Light Rapture. When Jade Light Spelunker enters the battlefield, it explores X times. In this case, twice. Mm -hmm. To explore, you look at the top card of your library and you put that card in your hand if it's a land. Otherwise, you put a plus one plus one counter on their creature and you then put that card either back on top of your library or in your graveyard. I'm gonna reveal the top card. It's a, the ho -ho, the Skull Spore Nexus. It costs a lot of mana. It costs a lot of mana. Would you like to give it a read for me? This spell costs X less to cast, where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. Wait, I could have cast that. That would have been free almost. It would have been really good in your deck. Whenever one or more non-token creatures you control die, create a fungus with base power equal to those creatures. Uh, it's mine now. I would like to put this in my graveyard. Okay, double target creature's power until end of turn. Right. I'm gonna put a counter and I'll explore again. Another Jade Lake Spelunker. Hmm. I think I want that one on top. Okay. It's hidden now. It's Spelunking in my library. I'll pass to you. I'll draw. I'll play mom. Oh. And a Hulking Raptor. It is a four mana, five, three with ward two. Your creatures are so huge. I know. And in the beginning of my pre-combat main phase, I add two green. So right now, I don't get it because we already had that. Go ahead. Okay, that's a pretty good start. I will draw my Spelunker. 
I'm actually gonna play it now because I need to dig. I'm gonna pay four mm -hmm. and we'll go spelunking for three. Okay. I will explore once. I'll put a buried treasure. I think I want that in my graveyard. What does it do? Something from the graveyard? Yes, actually. Uh, when it's in play, it's just a treasure. But if I pay five and exile it from my graveyard, I discover five. A fancy Cascade. Fancy Cascade. Explore a second time. Mm -hmm. I do want this in my graveyard. I don't like that. <laughs> and then I will reveal, oh, this one again. I think I'll keep this one on top. Okay, I'll draw a card. Ooh, exciting. How much mana do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six. <clears throat> so close. In the beginning of my pre-comment main phase, I will add two green. Wow, you can tap for six right now. We're gonna tap two more, so we have four. And for those two, I will cast It's Incredible. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. Oh, yeah, I can't help you there. <laughs> so it's good. <laughs> First born of Gishav. Ah, Gishav. Okay. And it's a battlefield. You may pay two. I will pay the two from Hawking Raptor. When you do target dinosaur you control, deals damage equal to its power to another target creature. Oh no, my jade legs belongers. Bonk. Okay. And it's, they don't even fight. You just stoing it in the face. No, they're gone. Then I will use one of the maps to explore my Hawking Raptor. Well, there's a lot of exploring in this set. Oh, Ooh. Ooh. oh okay. What does that do? When it enters the battlefield, I choose a creature type. It's a creature of the creature type. With a triggered ability of another creature control of the creature type triggers, it triggers again. And since I have nothing to do, I will just do that again. Chick. Ooh. Oh, a land, free land. You drew a card. I will play a Restless Prairie Tapped which makes green or white, or becomes a 3-3 three, three Llama. And then my 6-4 is going to attack you. Ow! Yeah, I guess I have to take 6. Well, you might have thought I wasn't doing much. Yeah. But I have something up my sleeve. Arms. Darn it, if I wink, it doesn't look like I'm winking because I have an iPad. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I have something. If you wink with the other my sleeve. Eye, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> it just it looks, looks like I'm closing like my eyes. <laughs> How do pirates wink? They don't. I will play in plan. Okay, on play. See? Si. Si vous plan? S'il vous plan. <laughs> and I will play Abuelo's R Awakening. It's a sorcery. Return target artifact or non aura enchantment card from your graveyard to the battlefield with X additional plus one plus one counters on it. In this case, X is one. Okay. It's a one one spirit creature with flying in additional to its other types. I put a card in my graveyard earlier. Let's give it a read. Oh, the whole deck is built around this. I'll put a threefold thunder hawk onto the battlefield. It's a gnome, which is very important. It also has one counter, so it's a two two flyer at the current moment. It enters the battlefield with three plus one plus one counters on it. Oh, that's really convenient. So because now, five five? it's a five five. And whenever Threshold Thunder Hulk enters the battlefield or attacks, create a number of one one colorless gnome artifact creature tokens equal to its power. What? No. <laughs> yes. Now you make four gnomes. I make five gnomes. Power, five gnomes. And whenever this attacks, you always make five gnomes? Unless I make it even bigger. There's more text on this. And it flies. Pay two, sacrifice another artifact, put a plus one, plus one counter on threefold Thunderhawk. And it flies. And it flies. So I can't block it. You cannot. Uh, parler? No hablo. I'll attack you for three. Yes, I will go to 17. Haha. <laughs> Who's on guard now? I feel like I've angered the countryside. I will make two mana. Okay. Well, we have issues. I tell you. But you also have issues. I also have issues. I think I have a gnome army. A uh, normy, as some people would say. Nobody would say that. <laughs> I will use those two mana to cast Huatli, Poet of Unity. It's a legendary creature, human warrior bard. When Huatli enters the battlefield, search a library for a basic land card. Her poetry must be fire, because the crowd is going wild. And put it into my hand. Yes. <laughs> And for five mana, I can exile Huatli and then return to battlefield, transformed, and she's going to be a saga. Then I will attack you. Everything here. All the gnomes. Yes, everything dies. You take two, go to 12. Then for a dinosaur mana, uh, I will cast the Dino, Ooh. which is three, two trample. Whenever another dinosaur enters the battlefield under control, you may have this belligerent yearling base power become equal to that creature's power. 
Cool. And I will play Glimpse the Core. So I search my library for a basic forest card and put it into play tap. Basic forest. And I will play Mountain. And it's your turn. I will untap. You see, I cleaned so many creatures. Oh what could God. be bad? Remember the Skull Spore Nexus that I put into my hand? I explored and then I kept it on top and then I drew it. And now it costs a lot less because this spell costs X less to cast where X is the greatest power amongst creatures you control, which is currently five. I would like to play a Skull Spore Nexus. Uh, it reads, whenever one or more non-token creatures you control die, create a green fungus dinosaur creature token with base power and toughness equal to the total power of those creatures. Plus, if I pay two, I double target creature's power until end of turn. Oh yeah! Hola! This is like school. Did you have giant gnomes attacking you at school? I'm gonna pay two. For what? I'm gonna double this creature's power. Up to 10. I will attack with everything. I have a trigger. Whenever this attacks, in this case, make gnomes equal to its power. What's this power again? Yes. This. I have 10 gnomes. Would you like to take 13? No. <laughs> I would like to take nothing. So I will block the other one. Okay. These trade? Yeah. When my Jade Light Spelunker dies, I make a 3 3 fungus dinosaur. Ow. Sorry? Go ahead. I don't think it's gonna matter. Alright, at least I go down. Instead. I will play Galta! Stampede Tower. Ooh, very cool! <laughs> when Galta enters the battlefield, you may put any number of creature cards from your hand onto the battlefield. Now, yeah, unfortunately, I've envisioned this better. It's not a bad card! It's Gishath! Basically, oh, his, wow. his brother, yeah. It's a mama of uh, Isn't Quith. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, Elon Musk naming style here. Gishath, Vigilant Trample Haste. When it deals combat damage to a player, reveal that many cards from the top of your library, put any dinosaur onto the battlefield. So, I'm gonna attack with my Gisha. It's a 6-7, I'll block. But I got to do the thing. Congratulations, Tarab. Now you must die. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's time yes. to walk the plank. I will draw. I'll play a planes. I will double this creature's power. Yes. It was, un it was unnecessary. I will attack. Ah. Oh god. Well, I guess my gnomes were too powerful. Talalf, unfortunately, is a skeleton now. We'll still love him anyways. I'm sure you'll like him as he is. Please subscribe. Ah! <laughs> you fell right into my trap. Los trapos. See. Still a lot of traps in Spanish. I'm back and I build a new deck and it's gonna be awesome. Let's play. Okay, Meryl Street. We meet again. I don't think we've met. Enchanté. Mmm, enchanté. I keep. This deck is a Demir Descent deck because you have so many ways to put cards into your graveyard and then use your graveyard to either get them back or reanimate stuff with crafting or descend your permanents into cooler permanents because then they are very powerful. For example, we have Bring of the Last Gift, which is basically living end on, well, not legs because like really big dinosaur trucks because it's a 6-6 six, six flyer as well that I got to keep but also since we land cycle all of the dinosaurs into the graveyard we get all of the big creatures back as well while our opponent sacrifices them all it's beautiful I'll play an island okay or as we call it Isla I will tap a la Isla you play and play the Enigma Jewel so it's a legendary artifact that comes into play Tapa I can tapa my Enigma Jewel to add two mana but only spend it on activated abilities. And craft with four or more non-land cards with activated ability from my graveyard, and then I can transform it into a mystery. I'll try. I'll play one we haven't seen yet. A Cenota Scout. It's a 1-1 one -one Merfolk Scout. When Cenota Scout enters the battlefield, it explores. Oh, we've seen this already. I'll look at the top card. It's a, in the presence of ages, reveal the top four cards of your library. You may put a creature card and or a land card from among them into your hand, put the rest into your graveyard. I'd like to keep it on top. Untap. I will draw. I'll play a Promising Vein, which makes a color. is a cave, one of the new things from Ixalan. You can interact with caves. I will tap two to play the throne of Grim Captain, because I saw you in Captain Garemo. I hope every Spanish person in the world is not watching this video. <laughs> no, I hope every Spanish person <laughs> Because they're hard to I don't know how they all know. <laughs> like a ship. Este artefacto es muy legendario. Even I heard now. <laughs> so I can tap it to what? mill two cards. I will tap it immediately to mill two cards. Because that's what it is. It's a millstone? And 
I can craft with a dinosaur, a merfolk, a pirate, and a vampire. You need all four of them? That's the whole party. That sounds like the beginning of a joke. Are they walking into a bar? <laughs> it's true. But believe me, the end of the joke, you won't like. Go ahead, mi amigo. I'll draw a card. The mystery. I'll play a plane. And I saw you do this last game. It looks really good. I'm going to do it myself. I'll go get a basic forest. And the play tapped. I'll attack you for two. Okay. Wow, it's a one mana 2-2 two -two that puts cards in your graveyard. Yeah, it gives you a selection. Pretty good card. That's really strong. Rakavan, watch out. It's also Murfo. <laughs> well, at the end of your turn, I will tap the jewel for two mana that I can only use for activated abilities. I will swamp cycle this. Oh, that is very cool. That is an activated ability. It is ability. an activated ability. I would like to let you know that I have now a dinosaur and a pirate in my graveyard. I will draw. I will play swamp. And with those three mana, an ever-flowing well. When it enters the battlefield, you mill two cards. I will mill two cards. Oh, a dinosaur. I already had a dinosaur. I didn't need it. You can always have more dinosaurs. And an aura. I also didn't need it. But I will draw two. One, two. And then it has an effect. Descent eight. At the beginning of your upkeep, if there are eight or more permanent cards in your graveyard, transform it. Oh, I wish I brought some graveyard hate. I'll draw a card. I'll spelunk. Ooh. I'll explore. Mm -hmm. Trois fois. Ooh. Number one. This will go in the graveyard. I've got to dig. Number two. Glimpse the core. I need to dig, so I don't want this. Number three. Oh, it's all right. I put it into my hand. I'll attack you for two. I can't block. We'll go to 60. And I'll pass the turn to you. At the end of your turn, you might have uh, heard this already. Are you going to cycle another dinosaur? I will cycle oh. another dinosaur. This time, the blue one. I will get the island. And then, because I thinned out my deck, I hit more permanent spells. So, we hit an instant. <laughs> oh no. And a sorcery. Well, that's okay. 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 Uh, draw. I will start by milling two. See what I have. Ooh, another dinosaur. Yeah. Ooh, a vampire! I play another new card, which I think is really good. I play a Sunken Citadel. So it enters the battlefield tapped. And as it enters, I choose a color. I'm gonna say. But I can also tap it to add two mana of blue, which I can only use for ability of land sources. And then for one blue, I will cast a Spyglass turn. So when it comes into play, I create a map token. Uh, I will tap my jewel, which adds two mana for activated abilities. For the first ability, I will sacrifice my promising vein. Yeah, but it was so promising. It is still very promising because it gets me a basic land. It gets a swamp. Tap. Which is also a permanent card for my Everflowing Well. Ooh. All right. And a card with activated abilities for my Igbima Jewel. For the second mana, I will use my map because it's also an activated ability. Mm. I will explore on my Siren. Okay. Oh, it's only a vampire demon. Okay, you've got a lot of artifacts. You've done a lot of stuff. I just don't understand what it is. I'm going to dig for my win con. Mm -hmm. I'm going to play a In the Presence of Ages. I reveal the top four cards of my library. I'm going to put a creature card and or a land card from among them into my hand. The rest into my graveyard. Unfortunately, you didn't hit a creature. I didn't hit a creature, so Aww. I'll just take this planes. I want my gnome. I'll play a land and a treasure map. Treasure map is a classic of Magic Aww, the Gathering. Yes. One of my favorite cards. It's a artifact. If you pay one, you tap it, you scry one, but a landmark counter on treasure map. But once you have three or more of these, I flip it. It becomes a land. I create three treasure tokens. And if I tap it and sacrifice a treasure token, I draw a card. I can't do anything with it. So I'm going to smash for five. I will block. <laughs> okay, trade, and you take three. 13. Okay, so I will untap, in my upkeep, the ever-flowing well. Let's find out what it does. I hope it's not ever-flowing bad. So it's oh, a it's land. a land. It makes a blue, and whenever you cast a permanent spell, using mana produced by the mirrored pools, up to one other target permanent you control becomes a copy of that spell until end of turn. I will draw a card. I will tap two mana. And play River Hero Scout. As River Hero Scout enters the battlefield, it explores. Boom. You might have noticed, it's a little bit hidden, but I've assembled the Exodia of a merfolk, a pirate, a demon, and a dinosaur. Wow, and some might have said that it was impossible. Well, they were fools. All right, let's see what happens, right? I will use four mana and craft. Exile this artifact. Exile the four among the permanents you control and our cards in your graphic. So, it's a legendary creature, skeleton spirit pirate. 
and it has menace, trample, lifelink, and hexproof. That's so much things. Right? It's also seven. Wow! When the Grim Captain attacks, each opponent sacrifices a non-land permanent. Then you may put an exile creature card used to craft onto the battlefield under your control, tapped and attacked. Ooh, and you have a six seven in here. And the cool pirate. And I will play an island. And it's your turn. Ay, 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 ay. I don't know how I'm gonna deal with this. I need to start digging now. I'm going to scry with my treasure map. That doesn't save me. I'm gonna draw a card. I'm gonna make a Matzalantli, the great door. Nothing protects you more than a great door. I'll draw and discard. Okay. As doors do. I'll discard a planes. I can't even attack. No. I pass the turn. Okay. We didn't make the Grim Captain to leave him at home. He's anxious. He wants to go party. And you know who you party best with? Dinosaurs. And vampire cleric. Oh. Actually a dinosaur. Yeah, yes, it's okay, more factually sure. correct. Okay. He did. And so this dinosaur is a 6-7 ward 3. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I block. Okay. I'll take 7. We just swap life totals. Oh, it has lifelink. I will play an island again. Okay, it's your turn. This might be my last draw. I'm going to be honest with you, I don't have anything cooked. I'm going to have to scry. I'll put this on the bottom. I will draw. I will play a planes. I will use my Masantli to draw and discard. And this Dolph is going to have to be a really good card. So I will flip it with my sword. Like a cool pirate. Hurry up! Can you reveal it, please? It's a bird treasure. I will discard a forest. <sighs> and my last chance. I will pay five mana. And exile this buried treasure from my graveyard. Okay. If I exile it from my graveyard, I discover five. I activate only as a sorcery. I think I'm dead unless I get something really good. It's a forest. Ooh. Okay. So this is the deck is built so that I can get these again. But mm, just cover five. I didn't hit my gnomes. Well done. Yeah. I didn't hit my gnomes. I'm gonna get a abuelo's R awakening. Um, I return target artifact or non-aura enchantment card from my graveyard to the battlefield. Unfortunately, it's this. <laughs> yes, that face, that face is appropriate. So you found a brick, literally. I bricked. <laughs> yes. Bricked. It's a 1-1 one, one flying spirit, though. Search your library for a basic planes card, reveal and put into your hand, you gain two life. I go get a planes, put it into my hand, and hope you can't deal with my brick. I will untap and draw. I'll cast. Corpse of the Lost. It's an enchantment. Skeleton needs control. Have plus moments on haste. When I enter the battlefield, I get a 2-2 black skeleton pirate creature token. At the beginning of your end step, if you descend it this turn, you may pay one life. If you do, return it to my owner's hand. Unfortunately, you don't get to see how cool it is because I will kill your creature. No! My brick! I will discard the Cavern of Souls. Then I will attack you with my two skeletons, because they have haste, and my dinosaur. And then the Grim Captain will add another vampire. And they're gonna beat you! You have less life, so I lose it right. And then you take 90. Well, shiver me timbers, because I thought my gnome deck was undefeated. Are you shaving with your sword? Yeah, it's a victory shave. That's what they did back there. How do you know? Uh, Is it because you have gray hair and you were there at the time? How dare you? You also have gray hair. Yeah, I was there at the time with the vampires. <sighs> Okay, well, that was so much fun. It I, was so much it fun. It was incredible how just one block gives you so much resources to build something cool. Like the deck I built just had so many angles and it fit together. Really good. Yeah, if you enjoyed this, not only did we enjoy putting these cards together, but the most common way to play Magic is to just crack packs with your friends and make decks with them. So if you want to see more of this, let us know in the comments below. Uh, maybe it'll give us an opportunity to do this for every set. Who knows? It was a lot of fun. But also, some of you have been bad, bad people because we noticed only 50% of you are subscribed. And that's really mean. So either you press the button right now, it's right there. Or you walk the plank. There's a plank somewhere. You will be walked. You'll find out about it.